I'm Chris Shelton coming to you from a beautiful uh, kind of cloudy day here in San Jose, California, the heart of Silicon Valley, coming to you with your DIY Home Remedies Guide to Health, Happiness and Healing Transformations. Hello there, little bird. Anyways, today I thought what we'd talk about is knee pain. What is going on with all this knee pain? I have so many clients that come in with knee pain. Unless you're somebody that actually had a, a physical injury, like the knee was kicked, got a torn meniscus playing ball or tennis or something, or you moved the wrong way and you, and you tore the ACL or the meniscus, that's a little bit different. But also sometimes even those conditions, there's a precursor that will actually lead up to the possibility for there to be a deficiency or a weakness in that area for the knee pain or or actually a tear to show up in the ACL or in the meniscus. So how do we look at it in Chinese medicine? Well, the knee in Chinese medicine, guess what? Is controlled by your digestive system. That's right, your stomach. And it doesn't mean that you're overweight or underweight or whatnot. It's the food that you're eating. The food that you're eating could actually help to strengthen the knee or it could actually help to weaken the knee. For example, if you're somebody who's drinking cold smoothies all the time or you're craving ice cold drinks all the time, believe it or not, that makes the stomach have to work extra hard, which then what will happen is, is it'll create what we call as dampness in the body. Another thing too, if you drink too much alcohol, especially wine, if you drink too much wine or port because you like that extra little kick, that will also create dampness inside the body as well too. So the gives the stomach, makes the stomach work extra hard. A lot of people ask me, well, Chris, well, how can the digestive system play a role in actually knee pain? Well, you know, the stomach merid acupuncture meridian actually runs over the knee itself, and the spleen meridian runs on the, along the inside of the knee on both sides of the legs. Now, your stomach is responsible for taking the food in, it rot and ripens the food, then it sends it up to the spleen to be transformed and transported into blood, or it's sent up to the chest to be made into blood. So then what it does too is it helps to separate the pure from the impure with the fluids as well too. So if there's an impairment of that spleen's ability to separate the pure from the impure, then what happens is the pure fluids of the body, like your synovial fluids, which is found in the knee, for example, turn into phlegm. So phlegm isn't only stuff that you get into your lungs, but it's also stuff that we see in arthritic pain, any type of joint pain. There's a, cis, a condition actually in Chinese medicine called a, a B syndrome. It's, called, it's spelled B-I. I used to call it a bi syndrome. And one of our friendly acupuncturists that used to be in our clinic, she, she corrected me me and said, you know, Chris, even though it was spelled B-I, it's actually a B-itch. So, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, I gotta collect myself. That was a total Freudian slip there. Not a B-itch or, or butt-itch. No, what I meant to say was, was it's a B-syndrome, um, and, and a B-syndrome is also when the pain migrates around the body. So there, this is go, that is going to be a totally different video. We'll talk about B syndromes or even B I itches later on. But, but right now, uh, come bringing it back to the knee, when the fluids are, are not transformed properly, unfortunately it turns into phlegm. And also phlegm can also turn up into cancer or other conditions inside the body. So we'll do other videos on cancers and fibroids later on. Okay, so your digestion is really important. That's number one. Now I'm writing my second book right now and the second book is on all the various different types of back problems from the cervical spine to the thoracic spine all the way down to the lower lumbar and the sac sacroiliac uh, portion of our hips hip and our groin region and one part that I'm covering in that section of the back is also knee pain. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, they say, well Chris, how does the psoas muscle or how can the psoas muscle possibly influence the knee? Well, if you watch any of my other DIY videos on back problems, especially lower lumbar issues, whether it's lumbar stenosis, sciatica, SI joint pain or hip pain, guess what? It all comes back to this darn psoas muscle being too tight. So where is the psoas muscle? The psoas muscle is a deep muscle deep in the abdomen. It attaches to the 12th thoracic vertebra of the spine all the way down to the uh, lower lumbar region. And it comes at, down into the front of the body here where it, it attaches on the, the inner trochanter of the femur bone. So basic English, it attaches to the leg bone here. Okay, so what happens? It attaches all the way from the spine here. It comes all the way around here to the front to the groin and attaches to the femur. So. Whatever side is tight, because both sides are tight normally with the psoas, whatever side's tighter, guess what, is going to compress the vertebra, which then compress the disc, which then compresses on the nerve that comes out of the spinal canal that feed into the legs. Well, those, a lot of those nerves feed all the way down to your feet and toes. 
So if there is a blockage here, guess what? It'll create a deficiency, not only in the knees, but also two in the ankles and into the feet and toes. A lot of times, what will happen when there's any kind of deficiency inside the body, they actually will say that it actually will get stuck in the joint. So if there's something going on in the psoas, the psoas is like a belt. And in fact, in Chinese medicine, there's what is known as the belt acupuncture meridian. And this belt acupuncture meridian comes around here from the kidneys, wraps around, drops over the pubic bone, and it encompasses the three yin meridians of the legs and the three yang meridians of the outside of the legs. So just like a belt, if the belt's too tight, guess what? the chi, the blood flow is going to be impeded and it's going to create a deficiency below that area. And a lot of times it will actually show up in the knee. So making sure to have this psoas stretch is of utmost importance. So there's a couple of stretches that you could do, but what else can we do? Well, there's some silk reeling exercises found in Tai Chi that are actually beneficial to be able to loosen up the knee. And it is very simple. And also what we're going to do is we're going to do some gentle hip rotations also found in silk reeling to help to kind of loosen up the hip and groin region, but it's not going to really get the deep, deep psoas. You have to do a psoas stretch and that's coming out in my second book. But what we're going to do is here is we're going to start off with our feet out about shoulders width apart. And now if you want to, you could go ahead and rotate in big circles. Okay, big circles. Now, as you become much more refined with this, what will happen is, is that you actually will make these into small circles. So I rotate one way, so clockwise, and then I'm gonna go counterclockwise. And you could do as many of these or as little of these as you like, you know, nine to 36 rotations. For the sake of the video, I'm only doing several in each direction. Now, the other direction we're going to do is we're gonna go forward and back down. So from here, I'm gonna hold on to the waist up and then back down, up and back down, up. And actually as I'm doing this, I can actually feel a slight, slight stretch in my lower lumbar, which feels really good. So I'm feeling a little bit in my hips, I'm feeling a little bit in the groin where that psoas muscle attaches, but also I'm feeling it also stretch gently in that lower lumbar region. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate that way, then I'm gonna go around this way, okay? So, so you could actually imagine a ball coming around, rolling up the spine, coming out of the xiphoid process here right below the rib cage and rolling all the way around to the perineum and then coming back around. So here, so here, now I'm rotating up, comes down, rotate up, comes down. Notice how I'm also using my knees, so I'm warming up those knees as well, not ignoring those bad boys. Okay, now the other rotation, now I'm gonna go uh, hip circles, hip circles. Now again, I could go big hip circles. Like I can do the hula, or I could do very small or small circles, more refined circles. And I, in that case there, I really feel it in the hips more. Okay, then I'm gonna rotate the opposite direction. So these are some gentle hip rotation exercises. So even if you do have low back pain or you have groin pain, then you could actually go ahead and do these as well. But if you're somebody that's starting to notice that you have knee pain, don't ignore it. Because again, if the psoas is too tight, and especially if you're an athlete, if the psoas is too tight, it could actually really create a deficiency in the knees. And then guess what? That weakness, you turn the wrong way, you go to swing at the golf club the wrong way, and next thing you know, you have a tear. Okay, so a lot of times our knees will inform us first by giving us some subtle pain. Don't ignore that pain. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate, all right? So what other silk reeling exercise can I do? Well, I could warm up the knees, all right? So I could bring my hands together and I could rotate. <clears throat> Rotating round on the balls of the feet to the heels of the feet. Okay, then switch directions. All right. This is one exercise. And then I could open and close behind. Open, close behind, open, close behind, okay? <clears throat> and then reverse, close behind, open to the front. Close behind, open to the front, okay? Okay, from here I could go ahead and bring my feet out about shoulders width apart. Once again, placing the hands on the knees and gently rotating in. 
Is this called the funky chicken? I don't know. So I'm gonna rotate it in. The Tai Chi people just absorbed, took over. Called it a silk grilling exercise for the knees, but it's really a, a funky chicken exercise. All right, so I'm gonna rotate in. And then guess what? I'm gonna rotate out. I'm gonna do the hokey pokey. I'm gonna shake it all about, okay? So I'm gonna do both rotations. I could also step forward to turn the left foot out 45 degrees, step forward with the right, place the hands on the knees, and then rotate. Okay, so making sure to place the hands on the knees to help to rotate the knee, then go the opposite direction. Okay, switch, stepping out. Now notice that when I step out here, my back leg, my knee is over the toe, meaning my toe is in the same direction as the knee is pointing when I bend my knees, okay? So from here. Rotate inward. And then rotate outward. Okay. Okay, so there is a few simple Tai Chi silk reeling exercises that will help to loosen up the hips, loosen up that psoas, um, as well as uh, loosen up the knee joint. And then whenever you're going for a walk, a bicycle ride, uh, playing any sport, practicing Tai Chi or Qigong, it could be a good remedy to help to prevent knee problems by actually doing those warm-up exercises that I just performed. Well, in the beginning of this video, I talked about how digestion plays a role in knee prob a lot of knee problems. So again, so avoiding greasy, fatty, fried foods, sugary foods, things with a lot of sugar or for processed foods, uh, trying to cut back on the wine, the port, those kinds of things is also good. Ice cold drink smoothies is also really good to hold, to cut back on. Um, but also too, the Qigong exercises I would do is massaging the yang organs. So I'm gonna bring my hands up, inhale and exhale. So I'm going to imagine golden light if I want to I'll close my eyes. And imagine as the hands come up, golden light coming up and filling up into my stomach and spleen. As my hands fall, I'm going to allow for I'm going to allow for any toxicity from the body to leave like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and deep into the ground. As my hands come up, I inhale. And then as my hands fall, I'm just going to allow for any toxicity to release down. Helping to massage those yang organs. And it's not only the stomach and spleen that I'm working with, but it's the gallbladder, the bladder, and the small and large intestines. But somebody may be watching this video and say, Chris, you just said that the spleen was a yang organ. It's a yin organ, and you are correct. But in this case here, because I'm really focusing on the digestion, I'm focusing on this golden light really coming up into the spleen pancreas as well as the stomach. And did you know when the psoas is tight that almost all the organs, well, actually all the organs come into contact directly or indirectly with the psoas muscle. In fact, if the psoas muscle is too tight, it actually follows the digestive system. And if the psoas is too tight, it could actually create constipation and difficulty in elimination. So things that we take for granted, this psoas is such a major component to not only our structure, but uh, our organ health as well too. So your stomach and spleen, in particular the spleen, also controls your muscles. So if you wanna have stronger muscles, eat the right foods according to your constitution. Don't buy into a fad just because it feels, because everybody else is doing it. If you notice that you're coming up with symptoms as a result of changing your diet, then really look at your constitution. I'd recommend seeing a licensed acupuncturist and nutritionists and see what they say about your constitutional health. And they can normally tell this by looking at your tongue and taking your pulse. Okay, so I could do as many or as little of these as I want. I could walk and I could do this as well. I'm gonna just finish up here by pulling down the heavens three times, inhaling and exhaling. Just allow for that white light to come in and smile on my digestive system, strengthening my digestion, inhaling 
and exhaling and inhale and exhale okay next movement once again will be the spleen move now our spleen and stomach connect to our earth element so from here I'm just going to shift my weight back and forth Focusing on the left side of the body where the spleen is located, I'm going to imagine a yellow cloud filling up into the left side of the body. And then as I exhale, I'm just going to allow for any toxicity to leave. Now, once again, the other things that will make the spleen weak besides poor diet or eating too fast or arguing while eating, having heated discussions while eating, is worry, overthinking things, over intellectualizing. Okay, so we want to make sure that we process that worry and some of that worry a lot of times if you really think about it it's, sometimes it could actually be a projection of somebody else's burdens onto you so letting go of somebody else's burdens I actually made that connection today I was going for a run and made that connection that a lot of times people will project their burdens and then if you're sensitive to energy, you may absorb it, not even really realize that you absorb it. And then from there, you may brood over situations, over things, situations. Okay, so what we're doing here is then we're bringing in the positive virtue of peace of mind and centeredness. Okay, so I'm gonna come back, finishing up by pulling down the heavens three times, inhale. And exhale. Inhaling and exhaling just allow for that to come in inhale and exhaling all right just nurturing our stomach and spleen which then helps to strengthen our knees and directly helps to strengthen the knees and the synovial fluid of the knees joint so Okay, so there you have it. We give you a couple of practices and we're talking about knee pain. And once again, we're talking about just knee pain in general. Uh, if you have a chronic knee pain, go get it checked out by a physician and uh, make sure that you don't have a tear or the ACL or whatnot. But a lot of times, once again, those ACL tears, they come up because there's already a, a predisposed disposition in the body because the knee is already weak. One of the things I talked about is this darn psoas, this darn psoas muscle being way too tight. The other thing I talked about, number two, is your digestion. Now, not eating the right foods, uh, not eating the right foods according to your constitution. For example, if you live in an environment that's cold and you're putting cold smoothies into your body, guess what? That's damaging the stomach, which then makes it work harder, which then hurts the spleen, which makes the spleen work harder, which then it has a hard time transforming and transporting the fluids and the foods properly. Other things you could do besides the Qigong practices that I showed you, as well as the knee and hip exercises, is eating probiotics. So, or taking foods that are high in probiotics like kimchi and sauerkraut in, in moderation, obviously. Uh, starting off your day with hot water, a whole lemon or whole lime with some coconut oil. Uh, taking uh, probiotics, I recommend uh, powder or liquid uh, probiotics, especially that are refrigerated. As well as, click on the link below to receive my free book offer, as well as check out the YouTube channel where we have the 30 days of Qigong to better health. And so if you want to learn more about these Qigong practices and what else you could do in order to benefit your whole organism, then I'd recommend checking out that, that YouTube site and please subscribe. I am Chris Shelton from this beautiful cloudy day in San Jose, California, the heart of Silicon Valley. Until next time, I will chi you later. <laughs>